Welcome back friends. Today I'm tackling a question that keeps surfacing in Tesla communities on Reddit threads and in YouTube comments. If I own an older Tesla, is new technology possible or am I stuck driving something that's already outdated? It's a fair question, isn't it? Because unlike traditional gas cars, Teslas are rolling computers on wheels. They are constantly evolving with over-the-air updates, new hardware, and upgraded features. But the truth is, if you bought a Tesla Model S back in 2014 or a Model X in 2016, your car doesn't look or feel like Tesla's newest models today. So naturally, you might be searching, can I upgrade my older Tesla to get the latest technology? That's exactly what we're unpacking today. We'll look at Tesla's official retrofit options, the limits of those upgrades, the growing world of aftermarket parts and modifications like screens and CarPlay, and most importantly, whether all this is worth your money, because that's an important question, right? And stick around to the end because I'll share the upgrades I think actually makes sense for older Teslas if you're planning to keep your long term. If the previous questions aren't interested, you can just uh, um, fast forward to see the answer of that question. So first, let's take, uh, let's take a look at Tesla's obsolescence questions. Um, can older Teslas keep up? Let's face it, technology ages fast. If you're driving the 2013 or 2014 Model S, you're sitting in what once felt like a spaceship. But compare it to the 2025 Model S or even a new Model 3 Highland, and suddenly your car feels like dated. The interface lags, the maps load slowly, and you might even still be on 3G or early LTE connectivity. Tesla has added a ton of new technology since those early years, right? The MCU2 infotainment computer that's lightning fast compared to the original MCU1, full self-driving hardware 3 and now hardware 4 with better cameras and neural net processing, the heat pump system that improves your Tesla's efficiency in cold weather, and that's very important, especially if you're driving in Scandinavian countries or in the northern parts of the United States or Canada. And of course, Tesla Vision, where they've gone camera only instead of radar or ultrasonic sensors. So the question becomes, quote unquote, can older Teslas keep up with new technology in 2026 or 2025 and beyond? Or are they destined to become the automotive equivalent or of an old iPhone, still useful but clearly behind? So what are the retrofitting realities of your Tesla and what's currently possible? Let's talk about what's currently possible, how to retrofit your uh, Tesla. The good news is Tesla does offer some official retrofit programs for older Tesla models. The most famous one is the MCU2 upgrade. If your older Model S or Model X still has the laggy MCU1, Tesla will swap it for the faster MCU2 for around $1,500 to $2,000. That upgrade only can alone actually can make your car feel like a whole new experience. Faster maps, smoother streaming, and better graphics. Another big one is the FSD computer retrofit in your Tesla vehicle. If your precious full self-driving Tesla has been upgrading hardware 2.0 or 2.5 cars to hardware 3.0 for free, that opened the door to navigate on autopilot smart, uh, smart summon and traffic light recognition. But, and this is important, Tesla's official retrofits are limited. You can't call Tesla and ask for the latest heat pump or for a better upgrade for older Model S or Model X. They're not going to retrofit hardware for cameras into your 2017 Model 3 either. Some of these things are simply too integrated into the car's architecture. This is where the hardware versus software dilemma in your Tesla really hits. Tesla can push software updates across the fleet overnight, but when it comes to physical hardware, they're selective. So while some owners get frustrated, Tesla's approach has been, will support what makes sense, but not everything can be upgraded. What do you think about this? Good strategy, good approach. 
I think it's fair, I think it's useful, and I think it's pretty reasonable. Now, I'm going to share with you what I've heard about Tesla's aftermarket frontier and explore the unofficial upgrade. So what about the stuff Tesla will not offer? That's where the aftermarket Tesla upgrade scene steps in. And honestly, it's gotten pretty impressive. You'll find companies offering aftermarket screen upgrades for older Tesla Model S, big, glossy displays that mimic the responsiveness of the latest cars. Some even add Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which Tesla famously refuses to include. Honestly, I don't like using them either. So if you've ever searched adding Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to Tesla Model 3 or Model S, you've seen these products pop up. Tesla owners are also adding extra cameras, upgraded sound systems, and even wireless charging pads that look almost factory installed. And then there is the world of battery refurbishments and range restoration, which is still developing, but pretty promising, very promising. Now, but let me be clear about this, friends. Aftermarket doesn't always mean smooth sailing. The risks of aftermarket Tesla modifications include voiding your uh, warranty, glitches that don't play nice with Tesla software and sometimes just plain poor build quality. You have to be very careful when uh, using aftermarkets, retrofitting or upgrades to upgrade your Tesla. I've seen stories on forums, actually I've read about them, where an aftermarket screen worked perfectly. Until Tesla pushed a new over-the-air update and suddenly half the functions stopped working. Have you ever heard of those stories? Apparently, according to ChatGPT, many owners are big fans of these modifications. If you plan to keep your Teslas for another five years and you don't care about resale value, some of these third-party upgrades can truly transform your older and pretty much used Tesla. Now let's discuss the why upgrading a Tesla and how much it will cost by making a cost versus benefit analysis. Now let's talk about numbers because this is where reality sets in. Tesla MCU2 upgrade costs around $1,500 to $2,000. Tesla FSD computer upgrade, free, but only if you already paid $12,000 or more for full self-driving. So, is it free or no? You decide. Aftermarket screen upgrades, anywhere from $600 to $2,500, depending on quality. Battery refurbishments or replacement, uh, replacing your battery, battery replacements, that's $10,000 to $20,000. So, the natural question is, is it cheaper to upgrade an, an old Tesla or buy a new Tesla? The answer really depends on your situation. If you've got a solid 2017 Tesla Model S with low miles, spending $2,000 on upgrades could extend the life of your Tesla significantly, making it feel modern again. That's a smart investment in my opinion, but if you have driving a if you're driving a 2013 Tesla Model S with 180,000 miles and the battery is fading, sinking $20,000 into it might not make financial sense unless you've you're emotionally attached to the car which you should not. And don't forget resale value. A Tesla with the MCU2 upgrade and the FSD computer will usually sell for more than one without but aftermarket modifications, those are hit or miss. Some buyers love them, others see them as liabilities, aftermarket modifications. So the value proposition isn't always straightforward when it comes to that. Now let's talk about future-proofing your right and discuss strategic upgrade decisions. Remember, I talked about this in the beginning. So what should you actually do if you're sitting on an older Tesla? Here's my take. Prioritize usability and safety first. Usability and safety. That means if you have still got um, MCU1 upgrade, upgrading to MCU2 is almost a no-brainer. It transformed the experience. If you bought into full self-driving, definitely get the hardware tree upgrade because it future-proofs you for at least the current generation of 
autonomy features. After market upgrades, choose carefully here. Go for the ones that actually make your life better, whether that's CarPlay integration or smoother screen or something as simple as modern wireless charger. Just know the risks and buy from reputable suppliers. Looking forward, I think Tesla will eventually expand its retrofit options. With the focus on sustainability and longevity, I wouldn't be surprised to see more battery upgrades programs for older Teslas or even modular packs that can be swapped, uh, that can be swapped in. Right now, it's limited, but the story isn't over. So let me wrap this up with the big picture. Friends, your older Tesla isn't obsolete, but it's not automatically future-proof either. The good news is you do have choices between Tesla's official upgrades and the aftermarket frontier. The challenge is deciding whether the costs make sense for, your personnel, uh, for you personally. That depends on your situation. So here's what I want to know from you, and I want to leave you with, with a question. If you own an older Tesla, have you invested in upgrades or do you think it's smarter to put the money toward trading in for a new model? Um, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section and, and what upgrade do you wish Tesla would offer officially for older models? Something that would really keep your car feeling fresh for yours, actually for the years to come. Let us know, friends, your thoughts in the comment section below. Drop your experiences and thoughts in the comment section. I'm curious because the Tesla story isn't just written by the company. It's written by owners like you who push these cars uh, to go to distances. This is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. If you are your first time, please take a moment and subscribe to our channel for interesting stories like this that I try to bring daily. God bless you, everyone, and visit us at TorqueNews.com for daily automotive news. We'll see you soon in our next report. And give us thumbs up if you like this report.